you guys hey everyone welcome back to my channel or if you're new here welcome to the channel oh my camera seems a little high today um hey everyone welcome back um i was not in yesterday because i had to go do some last minute christmas shopping and that was the whole situation i woke up at five o'clock in the morning and did not get home until like 10 and wrap presents until like three o'clock in the morning it was wild but we got almost all of them done so anyways you guys i know there's still been a lot going on with the mama june situation you know mama june june shannon her oldest daughter, Anna Chickadee Carwell, did pass away on December 9th after battling adrenal, car adrenal carcinoma for almost a year. Um, Anna left behind two daughters as well as a husband. And a lot of us did not find out that Anna was even married until after she passed away. Her husband, Eldridge, did an interview with People Magazine, and we are going to go over that interview. And we're just going to talk about some things. And I may actually do another video as well um i have so many videos that i need to do but there's not a lot of time but i have several things that i want to talk about pertaining to this specific topic we're going to talk about eldridge's video i want to talk about um the suit that has been filed against june for custody of caitlin from anna's ex-husband michael there's been a lot going on with that i've been getting some more information about that so I definitely want to try to talk about that tonight as well before I wrap it up. I'm getting a late start, you guys. I do apologize. But let's go, let's go over this interview because um, it, it's really sad. It is really sad, the interview that Eldridge gave People Magazine. And to be honest, it it kind of breaks my heart. I mean, not even going to lie. It breaks my heart that, um, you know, anybody's dealing with something like this, especially so close to Christmas. When you lose a loved one, it's hard. But my goodness, going through the holidays, losing a loved one, it's so terrible. So we definitely have to remember to keep Eldridge in our prayers with those two girls too. Eldridge and those two girls, pray for them because I can't even imagine. So, okay. So as we all know, unfortunately, Anna Carwell, known to the world's chickadee, passed away on December 9th. After battling cancer for almost a year, Anna's husband spoke to People Magazine in an interview that was posted on December 15th, which was six days after Anna passed away. And I do want to just kind of note this. WeTV has some deal with WeTV, TLC. They all have like deals with People Magazine. If you guys have noticed, you guys may have noticed that like People Magazine somehow gets the rights to a lot of things. Like they got the rights to Christine's wedding. They got the rights to like Robin and Cody's wedding back when they got married. That's where like everybody's first announcement comes to for the most part. Um, so we're going to go over what others had to say. The interview starts out um, with Eldridge saying that he's been reflecting on how much his life has changed since Anna passed away. You know, it's, it's been a week and I mean, People are different. Sometimes people, it hits them immediately. What just happened? Some people, it takes them a little bit longer. And someone maybe like Eldridge, who had a home with two girls and a wife. He went to work, came home to, you know, a, a, a wife cooking, kids running about. All of a sudden, he's going to work and then he's coming home and they're silent. I feel like it tends to hit those people a little bit quicker because their life has been changed so much. So he's been reflecting on how much his life has changed since Anna passed away. He told the magazine, it just keeps hitting him how things are going to be a lot different moving forward. Um, he admits that the thought of going back to the home that he shared with Anna and the girls without them has been hard to process. Seeing their rooms empty and the home that they want the home that they want shared, waking up every morning to see that Anna and the girls are not there. That has been very, very hard on him. And I can't even imagine, which I do know. Um, June said, June said something along the lines of um, Eldridge calls every day. No, that was Justin. Justin said, yeah, Eldridge calls every day, you know, to talk to Caitlin, which is really good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, so that's good. But even calling and talking to the girls, that's going to be so different than being in your house in the evenings, you know, when it's bedtime and there's just nobody there with you. Hopefully he's staying with family. I really, really hope he's staying with family. 
So um, he says he's been very lonely and it's only getting harder that Anna was the one that he was supposed to grow old with. He says she was my one true love. She was that person for me and I will never stop loving her. There will never be another Anna. Now, he was asked to talk about the days leading up to her passing away and also the date that she passed away. So he did talk a little bit about that. He recalled her days as being filled, trigger warning, um, just in case. He, recur he recalls her last few days, last couple of days, being filled with pain, her being in pain. So her also being on pain medication and then breaking down in private. He shared with People Magazine that Anna put on a brave face and did not show a lot of emotion to the girls, to the family, probably because she did not want them to see her upset. And I started watching Anna when she came to TikTok um, earlier this year. I started watching a lot of her TikToks and she just always seemed like she was in a good mood. Like even when she would talk about the cancer, you know, people would be like, what type of cancer do you Oh, adrenal carcinoma stage four. It was, it was almost like she detached herself from the emotions that she probably had with the diagnosis and, which, and with the prognosis just to be able to put on that happy face. That's what I felt. I felt like, you know, inside it's probably got to get to her, but because she's on lives and she has daughters and she probably just kind of has detached herself from the emotions that comes with the truth. Um, to put on a break face, you know, like, yeah, I'm, yeah, all apologies says, I'm sure she was scared out of her mind. That's how she coped, right? So, yeah, Elder Jeeva said she put on a brave face. She did not show a lot of emotions around, you know, fans, family, kids. Um, even if she was in pain, she tried to just be optimistic and, and in a good mood. He also shared with the outlet that Anna was taking a lot of medication at the end. And I think this is a big thing to talk about, not really to talk about, but just to mention, he knows that she was taking a lot of medication because I told you guys, I've always had people that I talk to that know this family and people close to this family. And I was told that when Anna found out about the diagnosis, she made it clear that Michael was to get both kids. Um... So if at the last minute, maybe the last couple of days, if somehow she did tell June, well, you can keep Caitlin, could that be when she was under the influence of medication? I don't know, but I've been told by, you know, more than one person that more than two people that Anna had told Michael and Eldridge and June and other people, you know, Michael with the, will get the girls. And then with Eldridge getting visitation. And also I said last time that Michael got the girls every other weekend. That is actually not true. Michael actually got the girls a week on a week off. So their schedule was one week at Michael's house. Both of the girls, Caitlin and Kylie, one week at Michael's, who they called dad, one week at Anna's. One week at Michael's, one week at Anna's. One week at Michael's, one week at Anna's. So... I know there's a lot of people like that support June that, you know, are talking about like, oh, Michael shouldn't get custody. He was not her father, but he was, but he was, he literally in every sense of the word, he was that little girl's father. And the fact that they have split them up and now June is saying this was, it, I, I, I'm reading Reddit and I noticed there's like this page where they're like oh mama june and their family's new quote they should put it on a shirt is to say this is what anna would have wanted this is what anna wanted like they're showing anna's ashes in a in an urn and they're like this is what anna wanted anna wanted us to show you guys her in an urn and it's just like how do we know that's what anna wanted though do we really know that's what anna wanted you know what i'm saying it just seems like they're being very like everything they are backing it up with that's what anna wanted Oh, we're going to go to Disney. That's what Anna wanted. Everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, your heart makes you a parent, not your blood. So I'm going to try to come back and do another video later about the whole Michael and June because June kind of went off last night on Michael about child support uh, because in the filing when he filed for custody, he did know, like I have financially been taking care of her 
since, you know, I got with her mom. And then when me and her mom got a divorce, I still continued to financially take care of her. June made a comment like saying that Michael in the court paperwork said that he had equity in Caitlin. That is not what he said. He did not say he had equity to my knowledge. Uh, to my knowledge, he just highlighted how financially he has been responsible for her. And But that's the thing, though, is when you take someone to court, that's a part that the courts want you to prove. <laughs> that's literally one of the requirements. Have you been financially responsible for this person? Because that's part of the proof of, you know what I'm saying? So the fact that June is like acting like all of a sudden, I did see that June was on live and she called Caitlin a B-I-T-C-H. Yes, I did see that. Um, I'm trying to find a screen recording of her over it because um, I didn't record it. But I, yeah, I need to start making sure I screen record everything. Um, so I'm going to try to come back and we'll talk more into the Michael and June situation because I, listen, I'm talking to people and they're like, this ain't good. This is not what she wanted. It was known. So the fact that he brought up, you know, that she was taking a lot of medication. I'm like, well, did June like maybe convince her to say in those last days when she was highly medicated that she could stay with June? I don't know. Um, so he said that, yeah, when she was in front of the loved ones, she exuded strength. But when it was just the two of them, they would have their moments where they would break down, you know? Have you heard when it will be looked at for custody? Uh, I have not yet. I haven't, I haven't heard yet. Now, he then discussed the day that Anna passed away. Eldridge said that everyone knew what was happening. Like when it started happening, they all knew. So everyone was crying and freaking out. They were aware that it was happening. He said that he did his best to calm Anna by rubbing his hands through her hair and holding her hand. He said he told her that everything was going to be okay. He said he was actually holding Anna's hand as she drew her last breath. And Caitlin was there. Caitlin did witness her mom pass away. Um, Kylie was not there, but Caitlin was there. Now, Elders talked about um, the day before Anna passed away. He said that they had a talk, that him and Anna had a talk, and they said their goodbyes. And that Anna's dying wish was for the girls to grow up knowing who Anna was. So he promised them. So he promised Anna that he would do that. So that was something that, that Anna asked of Eldridge. She said, I want you to make sure my girls don't forget me. Make sure that they always know who I am. So that definitely tells you there. She always wanted to make sure her kids were with Eldridge enough that Eldridge could always keep Anna's memory alive for them. Um, so, yeah, he said... That her dad, one of her dying wishes was for the girls to grow up knowing who she was. So he promised Anna that he would do right by her girls. And he says he will spend his life doing right by Anna and the girls and honoring her wishes. And I have a feeling, and I don't know this, you know, I know that Eldridge has been calling every day, but I just have a feeling if that was Anna's wishes and Eldridge's and Eldridge knows, like it would have to be his, like, and I don't know this, but Eldridge married her. So if Eldridge knows like what Anna's wishes were, I think he would he would back those wishes up. Now, Eldridge, let's see, hold on. Um, after Anna passed away, Anna's oldest daughter, Caitlin, ended up with Mama June, while Anna's youngest daughter, Kylie, is now living with her father, Michael Cardwell, who is Anna's ex-husband. Eldridge was not the biological father of either one of Anna's daughters, but he says he plans to maintain a very close relationship with them, saying, those are my girls. I promised Anna I would do right by them and make sure they remember their mama. And that is exactly what I plan on doing. Eldridge and Anna began dating in 2017 after Anna separated from Michael Cardwell. And Anna and Eldridge got married March 4th of this year after they found out that Anna did, in fact, have cancer. Now, Eldridge said that they decided to get married after they received the cancer diagnosis. However, that's not why they got married. He says that they had always planned on getting married. It was something they had discussed. They knew they would in the future get married. But because of the diagnosis, it just sped up the process. Um, he said before their plans, before the cancer news, was to have a long engagement and a really big wedding. But they decided to go ahead and have a wedding when they realized they no longer had the luxury of time. Time was not on their side. They was not going to have, you know, two or three years to plan and then have this big wedding. They knew if they wanted to get married, it had to be quick because 
she also did not want to get married when she was not feeling well. She wanted to make sure she still felt well enough to go through with a wedding. Um, no, I don't think Sugar Bear went to the funeral for mine. No, he didn't. He didn't go. He didn't go. Um, and I do have a statement that Sugar Bear told me I could put out for him. So he told the magazine that they knew their time was limited, but they asked the doctors not to inform them of how much they had had how much time they had left because they didn't want to know. So I think this was something that the doctors may have had some sort of idea about, like how long she had left, but they did not want to know. They told the doctors, don't tell us how much time she had left. Just let us enjoy that time without worrying about it. Um, now, their wedding was filmed for the show and is supposed to air on the next season of Mama June. Their wedding was not the only thing filmed for the show. It is being reported that Anna wanted her fight against adrenal carcinoma documented for the family's reality TV show. She also allowed a WeTV camera crew to film her even the day that she passed. Um, and here, here's the kicker, you guys. The show's production team reportedly declined the invite to film Anna's very last moments. They were told, you can stay. You can stay, film her passing. This is what the outlet is reporting. That they were literally given the invite to film her very last moments. But they reportedly declined it and left hours before she passed away. Which is, I'm like, I don't know how I feel about that. Like, I, I don't know. To me, it seems like I know there are some like documentaries that film this kind of stuff, but it's like, if this is a reality TV show that there's a lot of fake stuff. There's a lot of, so I just don't know how I feel about that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There's this part of me that's like, that is too much. Like, that should have been just like for your, for your family to be there through that and not a camera in your face. Like, I can imagine me laying there and a camera like hovering over me and I'm like well he, adios you know like I'm this was my life and I'm out and there's a camera looking at me I just I don't know like I just feel like that would be too much um now so that was his interview we are going to get to see uh, Mama June and Justin has also talked about how we are going to see Anna's cancer journey on the show um so yeah let me make sure that I. All right. Um, once again, like I said, Eldridge seems to have a good relationship with the girls. He seemed to have a good relationship with June and Justin, I guess, because they are at least letting him get Caitlin. And from my understanding, it's not been from just the people that I'm talking to concerning Kylie, the youngest. It's been a little bit more of a situation even june said on a live stream and i haven't recorded i did record this part where somebody asked like hey have y'all talked to kylie and she was like no we haven't talked to kylie since the funeral and i'm like well why not why haven't y'all talked to kylie since the funeral and then she said something like they're having to go through michael to talk to kylie she's eight <laughs> she's eight like of course you have to go through her like her dad to talk to her she's eight you know what i'm saying and two, considering that June kept Caitlin and doesn't want to honor Anna's wishes to give her to Michael. And Michael was the one that like raised her a week on, a week off. Like he raised that girl, you know, just like a father does. But if I was Michael and you weren't letting me get Caitlin and you weren't, you were, I would be like, okay, if you want to talk to Kylie, yeah, you got to go through me. Because I don't want you getting Kylie on the phone and convincing Kylie to say that she wants to come with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, um, Caitlin is with June. Kylie is with Michael. I don't think in a million years would Anna want to separate her girls. I really don't. I, I really, really, really do not think Anna would have wanted to separate her girls. And last night when I was wrapping presents, I went back and I rewatched the Dr. Phil episode where June was on there. She talked about, you know, the Anna situation and Mark McDaniel and Pumpkin was on there. And then Mama June decided after she lost her show, due to allegations that she was dating the man that R-A-P-E-D, her daughter Anna, 
She launched the show. So she decided to go on the Dr. Phil show. And she said, she said, the reason I decided to come here and do the Dr. Phil show was because my fans want to hear my side. They want to hear, you know, why the show got canceled. Well, am I really dating this man? So I wanted to come on here and I wanted to tell my piece. And then Anna watched the show and she contacted Dr. Phil and was like, listen, you just had my mom on the show talking about my story and she lied about all of it. So I would like the opportunity to come on your show as well and tell the truth about what happened. And Anna literally came on the Dr. Phil show and said, Mama June lied about everything. June literally tried to say that she didn't even know that that um, Anna had been R-A-P-E-D by Mark until years after it happened. Let's see, eight. Eight years later. She was like, I didn't know what he did until eight years later when she came to move with me a couple of years ago. First off, Mark was arrested in June's house. CPS investigated June. June had to sign a paper like saying that she would not have her kids around this man. Do you mean to tell me you didn't know why you didn't know why your boyfriend was arrested? He was living with you. And you didn't know why he was arrested until eight years later. And he was arrested for R A P E D R A P I N G your daughter, but you didn't know? That's no, that's not right. And Caitlin even said she knew mama they they went into her house and arrested him. Mama was cuffed. They cuffed her and questioned her. She knew. And then they even asked Pumpkin. They're like, Dr. Dr. Drew, um, not Dr. Drew, Dr. Phil asked Pumpkin, do you know, you know, your sister Anna? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, why do you, you know, why do you say it like that? And she's like, well, you say we're your family. Then why are you believing somebody else over what your mama's saying? Because June apparently told Pumpkin that the only reason Anna was saying Mark McDaniel R-A-P-E-D her was because Sandy, June's mom, made that story up. So Pumpkin literally was like, my mom told me that Mark assaulted my daughter, but my daughter never told me, so I didn't know if it was true. June tried to act like her mom lied and made that whole story up. And that's why Pumpkin said that. That's why Pumpkin said well, I just don't understand. If you're, if we're your family, then why are you going to listen to what somebody else says and go, and run with that and not what your own mom is telling you? So June was telling Anna, that's not true. That didn't happen. He didn't do that to you. He would never do that to you. And Anna saying, yes, he did, mama. Yes, he did. And June's going, no, 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 he didn't. That your, your grandmother's putting that in your head. Your grandmother's putting that in your head. Your grandmother's putting that in your head. So, um, yeah, that also, the whole, I'm considering doing like a little video on each Dr. Phil episode and just kind of going back and watching over it. And I know a lot of people might be like, oh, give June a chance. She's changed. She's changed. She's changed. I'm just like, listen, if, if your mom and June even admitted on the Dr. Phil show, she didn't protect Anna. She admitted, she admitted that, that she did not protect Anna. She did not protect Anna. She did not protect Honey Boo Boo. And that was just, Honey Boo Boo, that was just a few years ago. Out of like all the men that she's dated, two of them were in prison for child molestation. Two of them. One of them's still in prison. Every one of the men that she dated and have like a record and have been to prison. So I just don't know. And here's the thing. I was feeling really bad about June and her losing her daughter, but and I didn't want to kick them when they were down, not at all. But there's been a lot of stuff um, that's come out lately. And people that I've talked to that know this family that have told me and they're like, this is not good. This is not good. Like, this is not what Anna wanted. June knows this is not what Anna wanted. And the, so my main concern is the children. That's it. That's it. If, if the family don't like what I got to say, my concern is the children. And watching Anna on Dr. Phil, like, talking about how her mom called her a liar. Caitlin said, not Caitlin, um, Anna said, you know, when I called mom and I told her exactly what he did, she was like, you're lying. Why would you do this to me? I hate you. Like what? He would never do that to you. He's been nothing but good to you. Like that's what you told your daughter who's telling you that she's been like that your 
boyfriend's been doing that now? You're lying. I hate you. Why would you do this to me? So, I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is what Michael needs to bring up in court about June and the boyfriends. Yeah, there. I think there's a lot of stuff that he could bring up. I mean, I don't know if people even knew that June was investigated by CPS. And this was back when the show was canceled in 2015, I think it was. In 2015, when Mark got out of prison, when Mark got out of prison, he was in prison for Aring Anna. When he got out, June literally reconnected with him, went house hunting with him, was in a hotel with him. Someone snapped a picture. Poodle, Poodle, Sugar Bear's brother, snapped a picture of Mama June laying in bed with Mark right here and Honey Boo Boo right here. And Honey Boo Boo was eight years old, the same age that Anna was when Mark assaulted Anna. So the show got canceled and CPS stepped in and investigated June. And June had to sign a paper saying, I will not have my children around the man that are one of my other daughters. Okay, yeah, sure, state. I won't do that again. My bad. And Pumpkin even asked Dr. Uh, Phil because Mark raised Pumpkin from the time she was like three months old to the time she was like five or something. That's how Pumpkin got the nickname Pumpkin was from Mark. Mark gave his girlfriend's daughter the nickname Pumpkin. And he is literally a sex offender, child sex offender. He gave her that name, but Pumpkin thought that was her dad for a few years or whatever. So June's story was when he got out of jail, Pumpkin wanted to meet up with him and just have some questions and and get some closure. Pumpkin wanted to. And Dr. Phil was like, no, you shouldn't have. I don't care. Like, I don't care. She could have asked you those questions. You still don't have your child around somebody that did that to your other child. Well, then when they brought Pumpkin out, Pumpkin asked Dr. Phil, she's like, I'm going to ask you. If your daughter wanted to meet the man that she thought was her dad for a few years just to get some closure and ask some questions, but he had did that supposedly, like, would you let your daughter? And he goes, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't let my daughter meet the man that assaulted my other child. If my daughter had questions, she could ask me, she could ask the therapist, but no, I would not. And I really thought maybe Pumpkin would, Pumpkin thought, I really think Pumpkin thought that Dr. Phil would be like, well, yeah, maybe so. I, I get, that's a good point. Maybe I would. But he was like, no, absolutely not. I wouldn't. All right. Do you know why there wasn't a will put in place? Has your source said? So I was told that there was something typed up. But Anna never got to sign it. That's what I was told. There was something typed up. I don't know where it is. I don't know who has it, but the person that it came from is a pretty reliable source. Um, and I know when they went to Gatlinburg, while they knew it was going to be like their last family trip, when they left, Anna wasn't doing, Anna was like, okay, kind of okay. It was when they were on the trip that she got sick and came home. But then like once you're in a certain level of like to that point, you can't sign things. If you get to a certain point of being like medicated or incapacitated, you're not allowed to sign legal documents. So I don't know if she just kind of thought that she would have more time and that she would get to it. But then, you know, it got to the point where she couldn't. That's what happened to my brother, too. He never got to sign it. So he had to go to probate. Yeah. It was innocent looking, but June it took it for a while. Are you talking about the picture of them in the house? Um, we're going to go ahead and close this one out, you guys. But we will come back. I, I, I got several stuff I want to talk about. I want to talk about Janelle. We got some stuff about Janelle. We got some stuff about Rihanna De Jesus. We got, you know, more topics. Yeah, so I think we're going to come back with the Michael and June situation. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, and then maybe after that, we'll do the Janelle. And I'm going to try to get everything done. As quickly as possible tonight. I love you guys. Like, share, subscribe.
Follow me on my other social media accounts, and I will be back here as quickly as possible. And we're going to talk about June trying to keep Caitlin. And for my understanding, not even working with Michael to have a visitation or anything. And we're going to talk about it. So, um, yes. And I'll, I'll read my Sugar Bear statement. Not mine, but the statement that Sugar Bear is putting out through me. I will read that in the next one. So, anyways, I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye, guys.